All right. So I'm back again, not to talk about um, diesel heaters or cars or anything. This time, or teacher strikes, um, this time something completely different. This time we're going to talk about this. This is the amazing USDX um, HF transceiver. You can pick them up for about 100 quid, complete with microphone and power supply. They seem to work really well. They've got their limitations, as I'm sure you've all read about. I made a mistake. I bought this one, which is the cheap Chinese ripoff. And with the greatest respect to um, the original designers, DL2MAN, Manuel, and Papareco 1 November, November Zulu, Guido. They are the two designers of the original USDX. And they, if you go onto their websites, you can see that they endorse certain products um and you're more likely to get a working one if you buy the true sdx i didn't do that i was a bit of a prat i bought a really cheap chinese one cheap as i could find i bought it off of banggood um and i knew about all the copyright thing and the way that uh, manuel and guido were quite rightly fucked off about it i did know about that but i still went ahead and bought the cheap chinese one I like it. It's really good. And if anything, it's, in, it's inspired me to now go out and buy the original true SDX. I need to buy another one anyway, because I want to get a little QRP set up in my house in Romania, uh, make it sort of semi-permanent out there. Um, and I'm now going to buy a true SDX, um, because I'm so impressed with this one. This one's got its faults, which we're going to cover a couple of them in a, in a moment. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, I first took the RAE in 1973 when I was 13 years old. I had to get a special dispensation from my headmaster, Doc Brown. Doc Brown of Stopsley High School, if anybody uh, watching knows Stopsley High School, um, they'll remember Noddy Brown. I had to get a special dispensation from Noddy to... Um, he didn't say, it's Christmas, not that noddy. Um, I had to get a special dispensation from him um, to allow me to go to night school at Luton Technical College. And I took the RAE when it was a in its full written format and was fermionic technology or valves. And I passed the first section. I didn't pass the licensing section. Um, I still kept the, an interest in the hobby, but unfortunately my interest in girls, beer and music overtook my interest in radio. I then took the RAE again a few years later, when I was working in the RF industry anyway. Um, I took the RAE again probably early 90s, I would imagine. Maybe a bit before that. Um, and I got my call sign G7EWL. I then... Um, was working in the RF industry um, throughout the next sort of 30, 40 years and um, I gave up radio. I couldn't be bothered with it. I was doing radio, HF radio all the way around the world and VHF radio in um, emergency disaster situations and then I started doing it in um, um, uplinking, working in uplinking and I completely lost interest with amateur radio. I've now got time on my hands and I've got the bug. I've really got the bug. So I've come back into it. I've validated my license. Um, I, I met up with an old friend, a friend of mine in Romania, um, Adrian, Yankee Oscar 3 Alpha Papa Juliet. I met up with him um, in the summer. We had a long chat and um, I'm back into it again. So I bought one of these. Um, out of the box, it worked really well first impressions anyway I only had a bit of wire random wire and I was hearing stuff everywhere particularly on 20 and 15 and um, was quite impressed the audio shit on it um, but the small um, active loudspeaker it works fine you can hear everything or a little pair of headphones you can hear everything um, excuse me the coffee's going cold okay so one of the things I noticed and this is the object of today's video. One of the things I noticed about it was straight out the box, <laughs> it had RF instability. Um, when you went near the BNC connector on the back or you 
flex the box. I could tell straight away it was RF instability of some sort. And I originally put it down to crap BNC connectors. The BNC connectors I was using had been down by my basement for 30 odd years and were grey and green and I'd give them a scrape and everything else. So I just thought, ah, hey, this is... Um, I recognised the symptoms straight away as RF instability, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But I just put it down to the connectors. And then I came across um, a video by Tom, um, Victor Echo 7 November Gold Kilo. And he'd done quite a lot of research on this. And he'd highlighted a, um, a, a problem. He highlighted a couple of problems um, to do with these radios. And it's down to earthing. Um, and basically pretty naff RF design for grounding. I have seen this before. So for a few years I was working in the uh, TVRO industry and we used to buy a lot of IF amplifiers and IF switches and it's something I came across often. You'd buy, you'd do a design using... Um, smart tv design using something like catherine switches and you think hey this is brilliant and then of course the accountants would get hold of it and say oh you need to cut some costs on the next project you're using you know, you're spending way too much money on this gear <laughs> joe boring in the gray suit he just done a little bit of googling and he found it's the same product for a fraction of a cost so anyway you'd end up getting forced into using some chinese shit to keep the accountants happy and it used to cost us a fortune then because they was inst very instable, unstable. RF instability was the thing with all that stuff. It was all made in substandard flexi boxes. The grounding wasn't right. Nothing was tight. And it used to cost us more money than we'd, we'd, we'd saved in the end. So I have seen this before with some of these cheaper Chinese products. And Tom, Victor Echo 7, November Gold Kilo, is quite right. This um, connector here, the BNC connector, hasn't really got any connection electrically with either of the cases. Um, the case comes off in two places, two, two halves. I've taken the screws out, obviously, there, Allen screws or hex screws. Um, and there's no connection between the case, he's quite right, between the case um and the um pcb they had hoped i think squeaky stall sorry they'd hoped that the um the groove it sits in on this extrusion was going to somehow make contact with the earth plane along the edges of a board that was never going to happen because it's been powder coated so there was no real earth connection so the purpose of the video today is to show you a really quick way of getting some grounding. Um, so I'm going to, first of all, we're going to just very carefully, I'm just going to move the camera now, so I'm out of shot, but the, hopefully the radio will be in shot. So very carefully, I'm going to remove the speaker plug, just to stop it flapping about. You need to do this really carefully so you don't damage any of the print on the board. That's the speaker disconnected. Pair of pliers. And we're going to undo the nut on the BNC socket. I'm going to link Tom's excellent video um at the bottom here in a moment i suggest you watch that video because there's also a, res a resistor he discovered was missing on his i think it's c23 uh sorry r23 and he thinks it's so his video suggests it's in the rf in the rf driver stage stages um somehow i'm going to investigate but while i've got this open i'm going to show you something after watching Tom's video, I had a look, and guess, guess what? Mine also has the same resistor missing. If you can see that, there are 23. Tom says it's a 100k resistor, 
I'm going to have a look and what I'm going to do is do another video later on um, of putting the resistor in there. But for now, the purpose of this video is to get the ground in. So here's our back plate. This air conditioning tape, aluminium sticky tape. Um, I use it for various projects, uh, mainly to do with my diesel heater, my duct. I think it is actually called duct tape, not duct tape, duct tape, aluminium duct tape. So the hardest bit of this whole thing is going to be taking the back in off of this tape. And anybody who's ever used this stuff will know exactly what I mean. <laughs> Some minutes later, there we go. So there's our aluminium tape, backings off, here's our back panel. You can see where this is going, can't you? I'm going to try and do it as neat as I can. I'm not known for my tidiness. Okay. Right, now you get the gist. Because both here and here are screw fixing holes which go into the end of the top and bottom extrusion, extrusions, casing. So now, if we trim round the edge of this, Okay, so, so far we've got that. You know where this is going, don't you? It's not rocket science. I'm going to try and leave as much foil on the BNC socket as I can in the hole. As much foil tape as I can, because I want it to make really good contact with the BNC socket. So what I've done is, I've pushed it inside the hole. So it's almost like a, a plated through hole now. You can see that, hopefully. Hopefully the camera's catching that. So it's almost like a plated through hole now. And you can see the, the back side is there. So we're gonna just flatten that off. This couldn't really be simpler, could it? Back to our radio. Um, we're going to just make the hole slightly bigger there, slightly bigger there. And all we need to do now is find the screw, which I've lost. <laughs> you have to laugh, don't you? Right, we'll use one of these screws and we'll look for that other screw in a moment. Screw, crinkle washer, <laughs> just a moment, back again, yes yeah, so I put the screw over there in that lid to keep it, so I didn't lose it, of course, how often do we do that, put somewhere safe? My, um, one of my sons lent me a, a very expensive thermal imaging camera. It's something he'd bought. He was writing some software. 
and it was something he bought. He didn't buy a cheap one, of course. He bought a really expensive one because he had to know that his measurements and everything was okay. So he bought this um, very expensive thermal imaging camera and uh, he lent it to me when I was working on the diesel heaters, um, which was great. And then it was just before Christmas and we had some um, friends of a family coming round with little kids. And I said, hey, we need to move that um, thermal imaging heater or uh, meter away. Um, because if the kids get hold of it, it's like four or five hundred quid for the heat of uh, meter test equipment. So I put it somewhere really safe. It's so safe, in, found, in fact, I haven't found it since I put it, put it there. So I need to find it. He keeps on asking me, like, oh, yeah, I must, uh, I'll bring it over sometime. And uh, I keep on hoping it's going to turn up, but so far it hasn't. I really hope it hasn't been chucked away or something. Well, there you are. The joys of putting things in safe places. Probably want to be quite careful tightening this um, nut up. You don't need to overdo it. You don't want to put any stress on the joints on the back of that board. So there we are. So that screw now uh, goes into the bottom extrusion. And then the top screw will obviously go into the top extrusion. And I think that's pretty well earthed up. I might, at a later date, I might take a, um, a small piece of wire inside. No, I don't think there's any need to do that, actually. It's going to cause problems. But anyway, I'm quite happy with that, and um, I'll give it a test later on. But I think that gives it as good a chance as any to ground the case to the BNC socket without any pieces of external cable. It doesn't look particularly pretty, but it doesn't look that bad, does it? And it's at the back of the transceiver as well. So thanks very much for watching. Um, I'm going to do a few videos on this, I think, over the coming months. Um, I am going to buy one of the true SDXs, as I say, and I'm going to set that up in um, Romania and operate from there. Um, it'd be nice to work any of you guys um, from there. Um, on the moment, I've set up a N-fed half-wave dipole, and I've made a, a, an un un 49 to 1 transformer. This is one I made earlier. A small one miniature one and I've actually got a bigger one up on the um, aerial now um, tuned for 40 and I'm going to put a trap in for um, 80 so there you are quite impressed with this for the price you cannot go wrong can you and I'm looking forward to doing a few little mods to it okay thanks very much for viewing have a good day and um, see you on the next one cheers for now